Now, of course, I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna recommend some stuff that you buy. Of course, of course. What are you crazy? What are you crazy? What are you nuts? All right, cool. Welcome everybody. It is five. So today, this video is gonna be about heart rate variability, part number two, uh, which means number two for the Americans here. And um, but before we get into that, we're gonna do our famous simultaneous squeeze, which is a breathing technique we use to stimulate our vagus nerve together. Okay, ready? So we're gonna take a deep breath in, hold it and then squeeze it and then get high momentarily. And then for five seconds, then you're gonna exhale and go ah, like that. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, breathe in. Then a little sip at the top, hold it and then squeeze it right out of your mouth. And exhale. Just like that, good. Ooh, that feels so good. Honestly, how crazy is that? Just a little bit of breathing. You feel like really good. You almost feel high when it happens, you know what I'm saying? It's just insane. It's just really insane. So, okay, cool. So here we go. Today, we are going to be going down the list of what is in this document right here, which is the document that I promised the follow-up to from part one, which was the video we did before, uh, where we talked about really just the fundamental aspects of what heart rate variability is, HRV, same thing. Uh, how you can influence it with breathing. I taught you a couple techniques for how to actually breathe. I actually taught you a lot about how to think about your heart rate variability without having to purchase a single piece of equipment. No hardware required. You don't have to buy things to be healthy. You probably want water. You probably want food. Those things are going to get you healthy, but... Um, these are all bonus, bonus, bonus things. Also, you don't have to do any of this stuff either, just so you guys know. Um, a lot of people like to make it to the age of 58 and then croak and then die and be like, I didn't waste any of my time doing any of this health nonsense. Um, so if that's you, then great. And I'm sure you know plenty of people like that, so don't be like those guys, please. Um, HRV can be tracked using some great tools that are in that document. A lot of these tools are things that are uh, wrist-worn watches, forearm straps that measure your heart rate variability from your arm, chest straps, rings. I'm not trying to flip you off. I'm showing you a, where your aura ring would go, which is on your ring finger usually. Um, mainly that's going to cover it. So there are a couple devices in that document that are recommended that you can wear that will track your heart rate and they have to calculate your heart rate really, really fast. So not everything that measures your heart rate will work. You know, just because a device says it measures your heart rate doesn't mean that it can calculate your heart rate variability. Heart rate variability requires a much faster measurement of your heart rate it has to measure the entire peaks and spikes really, really carefully in order to then give you the HRV. So that adds price, that adds complexity, that adds software. So it's very different. You're getting into a whole different tier of wearable device when you're looking at measuring heart rate variability and calculating the variation between heart rate over time. Um, and over time, meaning relatively time, which is over the span of 10 seconds or 20 seconds, not like heart, your heart rate from today versus tomorrow. HRV is able to measure like down to the milliseconds uh, very specifically. So, um, so that's kind of HRV in a nutshell. The video we did before is going to teach you the, kind of the free methods to get your HRV checked. And today we're going to cover the paid methods. Although, although I will say, not everything here has to be expensive. Not everything here has to cost you an arm and a leg. A lot of this stuff here is going to cost you 
well under a hundred bucks. So for less than a hundred bucks, you can get some pretty cool tools that give you a broad range of HRV measuring goodness. Now I will say on that point is that there are some apps on the iPhone and the app store that are able to measure your heart rate from your fingertip if you place your finger on your camera with the the flashlight on it's not just you know you have to get the application that's called software and the links for those pieces of software are in that document that i have in there you guys can see that i hope so good um that document is called improving hrv for vagal recovery using resonance breathing um but yes you can cool nice thank you Lori. yeah i put i i actually put probably a good i'd say all total that's 10 hours of time or something like that into that document you know it's not good it's not a document that's like a novel i'm not trying to write the next great american novel here uh, but what the time goes into is looking at the specific devices the hardware how they're used testing software making sure it works versus is it intuitive also just so you all know i have to keep in mind my audience right who are the folks watching these videos who is Lori? who is chris who is charlene um right who are these who are these names behind the profiles and usually we're talking about you know uh not we're talking about not a tech engineer at facebook who you can give them code and they can understand it this is for normal folks i would say exceptionally normal upstanding citizens um, who may not be highly tech savvy who don't want to mess around with bluetooth pairing and all the just the the rigmarole that can come with the some of these cheaper tools on the internet that can break so the research is for if you're 50 and up and you're you're not like a mega tech savvy person like I am, I'm tech savvy, um, but how can I make recommendations for things that I don't think are gonna break on you? That is a part of what goes into this document. You know, my clientele that I work with are typically women from the ages of 50 and up who are really, I think, smart in looking at how can I be as healthy as possible? How can I change the tide in my favor towards better health and not just accept that because I'm getting older, that that means my life is going to gradually get worse and worse and worse. I typically don't see that my clients' lives get worse and worse, I and which is actually very different than uh, the usual. The average trajectory once you hit 50 is down, down, down. Uh, uh, when clients I work with, when they start stimulating their vagus nerve, their trajectory stops going down and they start going back up which you can reverse your biological age. It's 100% a fact. Part of that is going to incorporate vagus nerve stimulation, but also part of that can involve resonance breathing, meditation, eating healthy, exercise, mindset. So there's lots of things that we cover that are all, you know, again, ultimately it's how do we keep our moms around longer, right? Guys, am I right? Like anybody watching who's my age, like, yeah, I mean, we love our moms. They gave a lot so we could be here. Let's keep them around, right? So it's a, basically a bunch of moms that we're, we're trying to help. Um, so anyway, that's the document is intended for non-tech savvy folks who don't want to become tech experts just to be able to run this kind of stuff. So that's what the document is. That's the purview. That's what the research is. Not that I wrote. I didn't philosophize about the meaning of the variation in your heart, like, I'm not waxing poetic about any of this stuff. It's just, it's a document. It's, it's smart. Um, so good. I'm glad you liked it, Lori. Um, but yeah, for everybody who hasn't checked up, checked out that document, that's going to cover the vast majority of what we're covering today, but with the links. So, so yeah, just briefly, let's just, let's just kind of like run down what's in the document. So what you're going to find are, there's three sections, three main sections to the document. One is software, two is hardware, and three is all-in-one devices. All-in-one devices mean something that is a combination hardware, software, they work together, and they're their one only thing. 
um, software by itself and then hardware by itself, I think are important distinctions. There's software that you can buy on the Amazon, on the, sorry, the Apple store and the Android store that will be able to measure your heart rate variability just with your finger on the camera. There are apps that can do that. So you just, you know, you, I'll just put my, let's see. So you see that, you see my camera is on. You basically place your finger over the camera. I've got that nice fancy, th you know, yeah, that three, you guys see, I got three cameras, not two. Uh -huh. So you put your finger there and then it's gonna measure your heart rate and then it's gonna calculate your heart rate variability, uh, it, which is cool. You can see the light shining through my fingertip, right? You can see that. So that actually works as a way to, it's pretty ingenious. Some kid came up with that. So some of the apps listed in that document have that feature built into it. So if you already have a phone, which, you know, maybe your phone's $500 or something like that, most modern phones today have that capability built in. Now, it's not like something that Apple natively supports. It's just kind of like, it's almost a hack in a way. But they just say, yeah, just put your finger on your camera and it'll show your, your heart rate. It's cool. It's really cool, right? So that's kind of, that's a portion of the software. Now, the natural downside is that if you have, if you're fidgety at all, if you have any ADHD, you don't like holding yourself still for one minute while your finger sits on your phone or you're trying to look at it, then that's not going to be a realistic solution for you long term. Long term is going to probably be that you're going to want to invest eventually in some kind of a wearable strap or, or wrist watch style heart rate tracker. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think the finger, the heart rate sensor thing, finger is cool. But honestly, it's it's for me, because I have options, obviously, I think it's a total hassle. It's one of those things like, oh, duh, I totally should have just bought a, 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 a wristwatch that measures your heart rate that, you know, there's one in there that's like 50 bucks or something like that. That's like professional. There's one that measures the, the standard, the Polar H10, which goes across your chest. That is like the standard, standard, standard. That thing probably will last you for the rest of your life. It takes coin batteries. It is extremely, it, every piece of software on the planet that measures HRV is compatible with the Polar H10 chest strap. So you'll have compatibility across all possible software you can buy on the app store for the most part with the polar h10 that one costs i think 85 dollars it's a good investment to to make i think but of course read this kind of stuff and see you know it does this work try the fingertip hrv measuring app in there first and then be like does this make sense to me do i want to use it and then so anyway there's software then there's the hardware. The hardware are those physical devices that are just the hardware by itself. Um, there's two in there. There's one called the Polar H10, and then there's one called the Shashi Rhythm 24. Uh, the Shashi Rhythm 24 is not worn on your wrist. It's more worn on your forearm. It, you put it on your forearm on the inside, and it measures your heart rate there because your wrist is a little too packed. It's a little bit too variable to movement. It's susceptible to movement. So you don't want to be, you don't want to wear it on your wrist. Um, but both devices work great. They're very compatible with lots of software. Um, so those are good options. One is cheaper, one is more expensive. Budget accordingly. Um, then as far as the all-in-one options, that's where you get into about three options. So there are three listed options for all-in-ones when it comes to HRV. HRV. The first one is, I think, the first recommended all-in-one HRV platform is called the LEAF, L-I-E-F. 
and that is a website is getleaf.com and that's a all-in-one really cool platform that's a little sticker patch that you just wear around right um on your left side on your rib cage and that uses advanced ekg to carefully and accurately measure your heart in real time and then that gives you immediate real time feedback on your hrv to show you if your hrv dropped in any one moment so think of it like this if you're in a conversation or you're sitting at your desk and you don't know you're stressed you might start acting out in a way that is stress based that's not good that means you're going to have a you're going to say something to someone and they're going to get really pissy about it you're going to hear something from someone and take it the wrong way that's the kind of thing that's going to happen if your hrv is low if your vagus nerve is compromised then the way that you're going to behave is bad it's just bad so we don't want that um the benefit with the leaf is that it does such real-time tracking it's always on it's always reading your heart rate and it's always calculating your HRV. If it detects that your HRV drops suddenly, it's going to automatically kick into a mini subroutine that says, let's alert the user that their HRV just dropped for some reason. And obviously the device doesn't know what's going on out here, but you do. And if it can alert you in like almost immediately, as soon as that happens, then you can do something to respond. And the cool thing with the leaf is that it will actually start to, it does what's called a dose, a downtime dose. So it'll go, it uses haptic. So it's like a little vibrator motor in there. That's really gentle. And it goes like, and then, you know, okay, cool. So I'm going to do a breathe in, like it'll vibrate on the in breath and stop on the exhale. So you go, or it's the opposite. It's, it's vibrate on the exhale, doesn't do anything on the inhale. So when it vibrates, you're exhaling. And then you inhale. Like that. And so the, the leaf will actually guide you through a practice. It's like the benefit of having a real-time coach standing next to you for the whole day telling you, hey, your HRV just dropped. It's kind of like saying, hey, we noticed that your vagus nerve is under a lot of stress right now. Maybe there's something that you could do about it in this moment. Maybe we could take a little quick, bre uh, little quick breather, maybe a little break, something like that that's what the leaf can do so that's why the leaf is really exceptional especially for getting you to get this all fixed and anytime you have something that provides such real-time self-awareness and such a feedback loop that's in like so, so immediate uh, the better you're going to get at it right if i were playing a game of golf or if i were shooting basketballs Okay, everybody's tried to shoot a basketball, right? We've all tried to go and shoot a basketball. Imagine if you were trying to, sh the, the benefit to getting good at it is, yes, it's hard. It takes, takes work. It takes practice. But eventually, you can go from not even being able to shoot a ball into the hoop and making a, a, a layup or a free throw or whatever. I'm not like a big basketball guy myself, but... Um, eventually you can get closer and closer to the hoop. However, imagine if you were blindfolded and you, sh you shot at the hoop and you couldn't even see if it was close or far away. You couldn't hear it, but somebody took a little video recording of you and showed it to you three hours later and said, yeah, when you shot that ball, this is what it looked like. But three hours later, you're almost never going to be able to improve that. There's no way. Because the, 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 the feedback 
process for getting better at shooting a hoop needs to be rather immediate. That's how you improve. But with these other devices that measure your HRV, maybe during sleep, and then you wake up to go, wow, well, I can't do anything about that other than, right? So fundamentally, your HRV is influenced by your day-to-day -day stress levels. So you can say, okay, well, maybe the reason I couldn't shoot the hoop so well is because I needed to get better sleep or I needed to eat better food the day before. So now I'm going to make a habit of sleeping well and eating well and maybe exercising. Will that influence you, your ability to shoot a better free throw in the basketball court? Yeah, it will influence it, but it's not going to improve it significantly in any meaningful, fast way. But if you are on the court and you're getting real-time feedback, you're going to be able to make those changes rather quickly. So that's why having something that does instantaneous feedback that catches you in the daytime to say, hey, let's have you check in with yourself right now. Let's have you do a breathing exercise. Now that is superior across the board when it comes to anything that will improve your HRV more, the LEAF probably will be that specific type of device. Um, and also the benefit with the LEAF is they actually can include a coach who is assigned to you specifically. So you can actually get someone who like, who can maybe, exp if you need to explain to you more, you can get someone to do that. Um, there's lots of great options with the LEAF uh, platform. Um, it's great, it's easy to use. You basically just go put it on and you're good. And it also works uh, in airplane mode. So you can leave your phone behind and all the calculations are made on the device itself. It's got a smart computer on it. So it's not having to emit Bluetooth all the time. Uh, you don't need to have your phone with you. You don't have to look at your screen for it to work. You can literally just say, you can tap it twice and you can get, have it give, go through a breathing exercise with you. It's very cool, very cool device. Um, and this, it's an FDA approved device. It's used by clinicians worldwide. So there are people who work at Stanford, at Johns Hopkins with clients, and they'll actually give them a leaf as a patient tool to take home with them to use in between their weekly sessions with their therapist so that they can have some of that self-awareness. Um, so that's really how good of a device the leaf is. Uh, it's not just a, uh, you know, kind of just like a cheapo uh, tool. It's... I take that device very seriously for improving your HRV. It is the best of the best when it comes to that. So very good tool. Uh, now the other, the, the next one on the list for an all-in-one is the WHOOP, W-H-O-O-P. The WHOOP is a common device that's a wrist-worn device, no screen on it, and it measures your heart rate and your heart rate variability. It's a very good, well-made device. Um, it is a subscription device. You have to buy it outright um, and then continue to subscribe to it. So you have to pay for it and subscribe both. Um, you With the Whoop, you're basically looking at something like, um, how would I say this? Not necessarily real-time HRV tracking and definitely not any kind of feedback. There's no early warning system with the Whoop. So if your HRV just drops out suddenly, you're only gonna, you're, again, you're only gonna hear about it. You're gonna get a snapshot maybe three to four hours later, if not the next day. So it's not actionable. It's not immediately actionable insight. Of course, it's helpful to go, wow, when I was on that train, my HRV just dropped suddenly. Or when I was on that meeting, my HRV was just totally shot. So it's good to know that kind of stuff, right? Or when I was on that phone call, my HRV was completely gone. Now the leaf will tell you during the phone call, hey, let's, and it will do it completely discreetly. It won't bother you. Nobody will notice, only you can feel it. So you'll go, hmm. You know, like those old Mentos, the fresh maker. Do, 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 ah. And it's like, oh, you're, you're in this kind of stressful work situation. What would you do? You'd get a, a Mentos and you'd flick it and then you'd come up with some clever solution. Basically, that's kind of what that's kind of how the leaf works is that it is that it is that 
do 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 wa bum 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 there's nothing better than fresh da na 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 da na 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 bum 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 with mentos fresh and full of life fresh makes better mentos freshness so the leaf is like the mentos freshness the thing that you have right there in that moment to react and respond to the situation you know again unless you like being that kind of that nerdy kid in high school who who gets made fun of and then goes oh dang it and then seven hours later you're like oh i have the best comeback if only i would have said this then in the situation um that's kind of what these whoop devices are like so uh but they can be helpful. I mean, I own all of these. I have a Leaf. I have a Whoop. I have a Polar. I have a an Aura. I've got all this stuff in there. I've got all those apps and stuff. So um, I have all of them. They all serve some purpose. The Whoop is best for going outside and exercising and running and then also being, to wear at, being able to wear it at night. So while you're asleep, you can see what your HRV was that night and what your what your heart rate was. And your sleep quality and did you dream did you have REM sleep so the whoop does double as a daytime heart rate tracker and a and an activity counter and then also as a sleep time device it's cleverly built too i do like the design of the whoop more or less so um so that's the whoop then the third one in the all-in-one category is called the aura ring O-U-R-A, Aura Ring. And um, all the links to it are, are in, in the document with the pictures. The Aura Ring is really cool. It's a small ring that you wear on your finger. It's not a daytime tracker at all. Leave it at home. I would not recommend wearing the Aura Ring whatsoever in the daytime. It just doesn't. It doesn't do anything more than what your phone does by saying, oh, you were active or you were inactive. I mean, it does have step tracking, but I don't know. I don't wear the Aura Ring at daytime, but I do wear the Aura Ring at night when I'm asleep. So I'll typically either wear, you know, typically try to wear the Aura Ring and the Whoop together at the same time. Just me. I mean, sometimes I'm traveling. If I'm traveling, I typically just bring the aura ring with me because it's got about a five five to six day battery life without having to recharge it um, if you don't wear it during the daytime so i kind of snug it into my um you know my my toiletries kit and then i brush my teeth put on my aura ring go to bed in my hotel and then load and then again with the aura ring it loads all that sleep data onto your phone right in the morning when you wake up and it'll show your your heart rate your I think body temperature, your um, your heart rate variability, of course, and your sleep quality. So it'll uh, it'll assess your sleep quality and your energy levels. So it'll say, hey, you probably are going to be able to do a lot of things today, or wow, your sleep was really terrible. I wouldn't try to push it at all today. So that's what the Aura Ring can tell you. It does have really good sleep insights. Um, and the Aura Ring, I think, is the best for having long-term trend tracking because the Aura Ring lets you swipe through months and weeks at a time and see like, wow, okay, so in the summer months, my HRV is really high, and in the winter time, my HRV is really low. I wonder why that is. Or you can see, wow, when I caught COVID back in the day, my HRV got really low. And then it had to, and then it slowly recovered over the next two months. So you can see insights like that more with the aura ring than with anything else. The aura ring gives you like really good nighttime uh, insights, and then really gives you good long-term trend data uh, for the for the full thing. Um, so, so that's good. The Aura Ring also more recently has tried to roll out some of these like meditation things that you can do with it or whatever, but they're just half-baked. It's not a good system. If, if, if that's your deciding factor for buying an Aura Ring, that's just, it's just dumb. 
honestly. Um, the the only the real usable usability with the Aura Ring is that you're going to use it to sleep and get your heart rate and your HRV, and it's a, it is a three hundred to four hundred dollar ring. So, you know, again, choose wisely. Now, the ring could last you for about one year before it breaks. Uh, the batteries do have a tendency to explode after about a year, but Aura Ring will honor uh, your warranty. And mine was replaced within a week for free. So I got two Aura Rings over the course of a year because the first one broke. Not due to anything that I did, but just because the battery bulged during the daytime when it was charging. Didn't happen on my ring. Nothing bad happened. It's a good device. But, you know, again, it's pretty advanced stuff they're packing into that little ring. And then I think newer devices, like I have the one from 2020. The one from 2023, the Aura Ring, has um, pulse oxygen levels, SpO2 levels, I believe. So you can see your blood oxygenation rate with a lot of the newer tools. Um, so that's cool. You can kind of track your blood oxygen levels during your sleep. Those... Those devices alone that can do that, that you wear for sleep to track your blood oxygen levels, typically run for about $200, $150 to $200. So that alone does make it pretty appealing if that's something that you're concerned with, like sleep apnea or whatever. So the Aura Ring could, I, I mean, I recommend it to all my clients. If they can afford it, if it's a no-brainer for them, I say, yeah, get the Aura Ring. It's really good. I would say the two things I would probably recommend for you for an all-in-one are going to be the Aura Ring and the Leaf. Don't get the Aura Ring, the Whoop, and the Leaf. That's a waste. Um, I think just, I, I honestly think if you really want to improve your HRV, get the uh, get the Leaf device. That one is baller. It's really, really good. Like, really fantastic. You're not going to go wrong with it, etc. Um, so... So yeah, that, that's my recommendation as far as that goes. Um, but uh, other than that, I think, you know, not much else to it. Um, keeping this stuff simple is good. Keeping it with a, keeping a good distance to it. You are not your number, right? So if your number is low or if it's high, don't let your ego get caught up in that kind of stuff. It's just, it's really dumb. It's really dumb to be like, my self-worth is determined by what my HRV is. It's just not a good idea. So whatever your HRV number is, if it's good, if it's bad, whatever. Um, also, look, I know some of you watch TikTok and you're like all, all into this whole weird new agey stuff about it's not healthy to measure your body weight because that creates a dependence and an anxiety around your weight. Does this make sense? Has anybody seen this? Type yes in the chat if you've seen this line of thinking that it's unhealthy to step on a scale because that can create a de anxiety and dependence around your weight. Have you heard this before? Is this like a, I'm not making this up, right? Um, okay, so... So, Lori, you have not heard that. Charlene, you have heard that. Okay. Okay, so 50-50-ish. Um, okay, fair enough. So, I think it's more common on TikTok, especially if you're in the, like, you know, the fat, like, the fat loss, the anti-fat loss groups that are like, well, it's fat phobic to even consider losing weight is a healthy thing, even though we know that there aren't 90-year-old people who are morbidly obese they just don't make it to that age so it, it you know it's probably something to it um good Lori. i that's the best news i've heard all day that you're not a tick i didn't take you for a tiktok person but um that's good to hear and also i would recommend people delete tiktok if you can um so okay so my point here is that with hrv it will become a number that is based on you. Um, the line of reasoning against using a scale 
is that it creates this, you know, again, this potential for anxiety, for obsession with a number, your, your, your scale, your number, all that kind of stuff. Um, my advice to you for anybody is that HRV could be one of the best numbers that you have to track long term. It's going to give you some pretty incredible insights. It's way more useful than just your weight because your weight, your body weight doesn't tell you your body composition, how much fat versus muscle. Your HRV does give you an insight into overall autonomic health, stress levels, like if you ate, if you're sick, if you're healthy, if you're happy, if you drank alcohol. You can see all that within one number with the HRV number. So HRV is pretty is a pretty significant window into into health. If somebody showed me their trend of HRV and it was like, oh yeah, my HRV has been like 60 for the last six months, I'd say, cool, you're doing some really good things. You should continue with a vast majority of what you're doing. Um, and again, you know, as we age, the pressure against this, the HRV increases. So what you're doing today and what you've been doing for the last six months in the quotient of age being a real thing that will continue on and on is that what you did six months ago may not be enough to maintain that 60 HRV. So keep that in mind that like, don't ever take the attitude like, oh, my HRV is 60, so I must be perfectly healthy. Like, don't take such a blase, ignorant attitude around these numbers, right? There's always likely something more you could be doing that probably doesn't take much more time um, and won't add much more stress. There, we're learning a lot more about ways to stay healthy. There's a lot more that can be learned. So what you, you know, did 25 years ago, there's always something probably to do. Um, so good. Um, so I wouldn't look at HRV as this like stress number for you. If anything, your HRV is going to show you insights. And how cool would it be if you like woke up one morning, your HRV was 16 and you and, you, you relearned yourself emotionally. If you could emotionally self-regulate to not start crying and start weeping and feeling like pouty and weepy and, oh, my, my, my number is a 16. Oh, God, Lee. Oh, my God. I'm not loved. No, you don't need to do that. You don't need to take that kind of attitude with, with a number, right? If anything, that, that lack of emotional resilience in the face of a, of a number, which it, you know, again, do you guys, do you guys, under, do you see that there's a, there's an irony here? There's a dichotomy on one hand. I'm saying that your HRV is important, but on the other hand, I'm saying, don't take it so seriously. Both things can be true. Both things can be true, but I've definitely seen people have a tendency some people, I've had some clients who almost freak out when they see their HRV number for the first time. I'm like, okay. I mean, I get it. It's not as high as I anybody would say it should be. That's true. But freaking out about it and getting really weepy is only going to keep that number low. And then again, then they start complaining well, then now I have anxiety because if I get upset with my HRV number, then it gets lower and I feel like I'm stuck. And I'm just like, oh my God, like who taught you to think this way? Who the fuck, where did you learn this from? Was this like, was your mother some, was your mother, did, has anybody seen the movie Mommy Dearest about like that, that, that actress, uh, what's her name? Mommy Dearest. My my girlfriend from years ago showed it to me. I think it was Joan Crawford. Yeah, Joan Crawford was a psycho, apparently. Okay, yeah, so Mommy Dearest is a memoir and expose written by Christina Crawford, the adopted daughter of actress Joan Crawford, published in 1978. If you haven't seen this movie, you have to check this movie out. It is psycho crazy stuff. So apparently Joan Crawford was, well, she was a Hollywood actress who's very wealthy. I've never, I don't think I've ever, I 
I can't recall any Joan Crawford movies that I've seen off the top of my head, but maybe I have. I don't know. But she was famous. She had a lot of money, lived in an elite mansion in Hollywood. Her adopted daughter uh, used some kind of a metal hanger or a paper hanger in the closet. And Joan Crawford was like, no more paper hangers. And she's freaking out. And she's, I think, I even think she was like hitting her child with this hanger because she was like, no, we only use wooden dowel hangers in this house with felt on the shoulders. I mean, like it, it was psycho. So again, when someone's like, oh my God. So if I look at my HRV number and it's low, then I'm getting anxiety because of my low anxiety numbers on my hrv and i'm like whoa 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 hey hang on mommy dearest okay are you channeling joan crawford here why are you freaking out about this this is not the it's not the biggest thing on it's not the nearly the biggest problem we have here okay um so yeah i would encourage just like be somewhat as much as possible rational ish about your hrv it is a number. It's important. Not looking isn't going to make it not true. Okay. You know, not checking your heart and not getting a colonoscopy and not getting your blood levels checked doesn't mean that something bad isn't going to happen. So yeah, it can be, it, you know, it's not like your HRV is like a cancer diagnosis. It's, it's your heart rate variability shouldn't be that ner nervous about it. I, I look at it with excitement at my HRV every morning. I'm like, ooh, what is my HRV going to be like this morning? Huh, cool. Oh, interesting. I wonder what that means. Hmm, what could this mean? What could I do differently? Did I do the things I, sh I should have done the day before? Did I show up for my systems? Did I not? Oh, okay, I can see why, right? That's all. That's the thinking. No weepiness, no crazy stuff. Just take this stuff with a, it's important, but take it with a grain of salt. Cause you know, again, it's, it, it's one HRV is a one snapshot of your heart rate variability in no more than a few hours time. So what's that in the span of your entire life, which could be, I mean, gosh, many of you watching will probably make it to past a hundred years old, most likely. So what's a day of HRV mean in the span of that? If your life is like only day by day, then yeah, I could be like, oh my God, that sucks. So be emotionally resilient when you're seeing this kind of stuff, okay? All right, so that's gonna do it for, I think for the main majority of what we need to cover for YouTube. Thanks YouTube for watching. I'm gonna end it there. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you like any of this kind of stuff, if you wanna keep it coming. And uh, thanks, YouTube. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.